The number nine is a perfect square. First and foremost, what do you think that means? Like, what do you think the number nine is a perfect square actually means? Bailey? That there's a likeness three in the way. Like three. So, but why is it a perfect square? Okay, so essentially anything, any number that is a perfect square will have those equal sides. So keep that in mind for this entire lesson today. All right, so what is one number that you came up with that is a perfect square? Oh. Uh, Jackson. 81. Okay, what is another one? We shouldn't be writing anymore, our pencils are down. Um, Cooper. 25. 25. Okay. Uh, Michaela. Uh, 124. 124. 144. 44. Alright, um, Alexa. You said 36. Alright, so what are two that are non perfect squares? What are two that are non perfect squares? Gary? Be a perfect square. Because like the rings um, of it like could be seven and like the wood could be like three. Okay, so equal 
perfect. So they're not equal, all right? And then what is one other number that is not a perfect square? Jason? Eight. Eight. Oh, wait a minute. I was about to say. Mm. We'll go with eight. Yeah, eight is. A rectangle. Wait, what? Yeah, that or it would be like yeah, almost a square, but you would be a bad corners and it would oh, be filled in. Oh, yeah. Right. You're correct. All right, so moving on to number two. It says a square has side length of seven kilometers. What is its area? All right, so a square has a side length of seven kilometers. What is the area? Emily. So if it's a square, what do we know about all the sides? Okay, and if one side length is seven, what do we know about the other one? Okay, so then I'm gonna do seven times seven, which is gonna give me 49 kilometers squared. All right, and then for number three, it says the area of a square is 64 square centimeters. What is its side length? All right, so this is kind of like a reverse of number two. Uh, Rena? I'm sorry, I just wanted to plug that in. Sort of like that extra like square would be the next thing. Yes. In a way, yes it is. Yep, 100%. Um, Jolie? Who? Not eight centimeters square because what is the question asking us for? What's it asking us for? Side length. The side length. So we haven't squared it yet because we haven't multiplied it by anything. So it's just eight centimeters. And generally, how did you get that? Um, I just did 64 divided by eight. Okay. So eight times eight is So essentially, you knew that eight times eight is going to give you 64, and if it's a perfect square, then. It's also I mean, it is simple math, but not everybody knows simple math. Um, all right, so this next part, 17.2, it says building with 32 cubes. So every group got 32 cubes. Don't touch them. <coughs> it says your teacher will give you 32 snap cubes. Use them. Now, this is important, so please pay attention. Use them to build the largest single cube you can. Each small cube has an edge length of one unit. So let me borrow one of y'all's, please. All right, so what that's saying is one of these edge lengths is one, sorry, one of these edge lengths is one unit. Okay? Um, so you're answering once you built your largest cube possible, you are going to answer number one, number two, number three, and number four. All right. Um, any questions before you get started? Yes, sir. I'm assuming it has to be like filled in, so it can't be taller. Right? It has to be like it's a cube. Okay. So what is a cube? Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right, so essentially we're going to break this up into two things. I'm going to give you five minutes to essentially build your cube, okay? It should not take you that long. Then I'm going to give you five minutes to answer the four questions. Once you are done, like once that five-minute mark goes off for your cube building, you've got to put it to the side and just use what you have. All right, questions about that? All right, go. Yeah, you guys can take them, you have to take them apart. Like in order to be able to build you cannot build two separate cubes. You have 32 separate cubes between the whole group. And you should be working together. You cannot build separate cubes. Yeah. 
their questions with now. All right, so you have four questions. I'm giving you five minutes. Go. Yeah. Wait, three times three. 
So, like, did you just build, like, layer by layer, or did you build, like, side by side by side? come up with a different shape using a different number of cubes that is still a cube. You came up with the exact same one. But we used 28 cubes. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Then I must not have counted right. No, there's one. No, they, yeah, there's they all it out. Wait, there's there's one one no, guys, you it, it's impossible. You can't. Like, you cannot not use 27. You can't use more and you, you can't use less. So did we figure it out? <laughs> yes. All right. So Jason's just trying to like try the a snap cube to make it interesting. All right. So essentially, listen. The correct answer for this question is 27. So you should have a side length of three, a height of three, and a width of three. If you do not, you did not build the right shape. All right. Number two says, what is the edge length of your cube built? Michaela. Three units. Three units. All right. Number three, it says, what is the area of each face of the built cube? And then show your reasoning. I need the following students to please come to the front office. Cooper. Annabelle Smith, Josiah Griffin, Mason Hall, Orion Lanier, Kareem McKibben, Carter Pearson, Andrew Williams, and Kent Wilson. Please come to the front office. Thank you. All right. So it says, what is the volume of the built cube? And show your reasoning. Why are you touching the snap cubes? So what is the volume of the built cube? <coughs> show your reasoning. So what is the volume? Even if you didn't build this cube, what is your volume? Corbin. 47 units. 47 units. Cubes. And why is that? Perfect. All right, so please make sure that you have these answers down as your answers. If you do not, you need to make sure you get them because these there is an actual correct answer to this set of questions. All right, so the snap cubes, please have the same person who came and got them from me. Just take them and put them on the back counter. Don't need to talk. Just take them and put them back there. Don't put them in the bed or anything. Just put them on the counter. All right, slide over to the perfect cube. So it says the number 27 is a perfect cube. We kind of figured out why, correct? Did we figure out <coughs> why that 27 is a perfect cube? Someone raise your hand and tell me. Ace. Uh, because it had, because all the sides are exactly the same. And Right, so they're all the same and they're all equal. All right, so it says find four other numbers that are perfect cubes, not perfect squares, but perfect cubes, um, and two numbers that are not. So I'm gonna give you one minute, go. <coughs>
right, so what is one that is a perfect cube? One that is a perfect cube. Mason? Nine. No. Because nine is a perfect square. Yes. It's not a perfect cube. So now, guys, what's the difference between the perfect squares and the perfect cube? Bless you. What's the difference between the perfect square and the perfect cube? Is it Perfect. So Mason, you did three times three, right? And you got nine. So then three times three times three would be twenty-seven. Does that make sense? Yes. I I, I didn't read. I thought it was well, at least you can admit you didn't read it. I appreciate that. All right, Jackson. Two hundred sixteen. Two hundred sixteen. And what do you multiply three times to get that? Uh, six. So six times six is thirty-six. Thirty-six times six is two hundred sixteen. All right. What's another one, Jack? Eight. All right. So why does eight work for a perfect square, but it doesn't, or sorry, work for a perfect cube, but doesn't work for a perfect square? Haley. You can use, the length can be two, and the length can be two, and the length can be two. Okay. And then for the perfect square, we can't do two times two and get eight. All right, perfect. Uh, give me another one. Joseph. One. Because one times one times one is one. Yep. And Michaela. 125. 125. So what is that? 5 times 5 is 25 yes. times 5? Yes. Okay. All right. What is one that is not a perfect square? Or a perfect piece, sorry. Um, it's really easy. Give me, like, give me the like smallest number after 1. I put 10. 10? That's perfect because there's nothing you can multiply 3 times to get 10. So you're 100% correct. All right. What's another one? Olivia. Seven. All right. <coughs> so let's move on to two, three, and four. So two says a cube has side lengths of four centimeters. What is its volume? All right. So it's got if a cube has a side length of four centimeters, what are we gonna do first? Tell me that. So what are we doing first? I need new friends today. I need new friends today. Nope. I need new friends today. I'm gonna start calling on people. Right. It means I like my my old friends, but I want some new ones. So. All right, Jeremiah. So if we have a side length of four. What is our volume? It is 156. Okay. So well, first let's start with this. So. How many times am I going to multiply four? Oh, uh, three times. Okay, so I'm going to do four times four times four. So, Jeremiah, what is four times four? Sixteen. Times four? It's fifty-six. Check it again. Please make sure that you have a three there and not a two. Why do we have to put a three and not a two? Why do we have to put a three and not a two, Charles? Because we're multiplying three numbers. Because we're multiplying three numbers. All right. <coughs> Number three, it says a cube has side lengths of 10 centimeters. What is its volume? All right, Jeremiah, you want to do it again? All right. So how many times are we going to multiply 10? Three times. All right. So 10 times 10 is what? Oh. Um, and then 100 times 10 is? A thousand. Perfect. So a thousand inches cubed. Why? Okay. Wow. And number four says so a cube has side length S units. What is its volume? Okay. Wait. So what is its volume? S. It's a letter. Letter S. Oh. Cooper. S. 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 S yes. Yes. All right, so it is that easy. Like, there's no trick. It's just S is our unknown number. Technically, that is the formula to find volume. This is what it's saying. Um, all right, last part. 
talking about exponents now. So, in a way, how do finding the area of a square and the area of a cube lead us into exponents? Like, how does that work? Jackson, what do you think? So, um, finding volume, usually you have to do, the, uh, or no, most of the time, I guess always, you have to multiply that number like by itself three times, I guess, and with exponents, um, depending on the number, like the small number. Hey. Joseph Whitlock is checking out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Here, you need to get this turned in tomorrow, please. Okay. With exponents, depending on the small number, that's how many times you like um, multiply that number by itself that many times. So with volume, the exponents pretty much, I guess, um, always. Well, be careful because it's the volume of cubes and squares. Because like the when you find the volume of a rectangular prism, all of your sides could be different, correct? Oh. Oh, but, uh, like cube. Right. So a cube we just learned through the process of what we did building the shape and everything, all the sides are the same. So that is why we do S to the third. And that's essentially why it leads into exponents just like a square because you do, um, we know that all the sides are the same there. So it says a square has side length of 10 centimeters. Use an exponent to express its area. So 10 centimeters, you're using an exponent to express the area. Write it down. Give me a thumbs up when you have your answer. Might not necessarily be sure it's right, but you have your answer. And don't overthink it. All right, because this is super easy to overthink. Just think about what the question is asking you and then just write down what you think. So we know that the length is going to be 10, correct? Yes. So far so good? Yes. Then we know that if it's the area of a square, how many times are we multiplying 10 by itself? Two times, right? So it's 10 squared centimeters squared because it's asking you to express the total area. So that is why you have to add the centimeter squared. If you just write 10 squared, that means nothing other than 10 times 10, right? We don't know why we're doing that 10 squared. So you have to add in the centimeter squared because it's asking for the area. All right, now the next one, be careful with this one, it says the area of a square is seven squared inches squared. What is its side length? Okay, write your answer and then give me a thumbs up when you think you have it. So Olivia, what do you think the answer is for this one? Four, number two? Yes. Why four? Okay, and that's okay. I, I'm Honestly, I'm glad you're confused. Because that way, like, we're going to talk through this and you're going to not be so confused. So right now, I feel like the majority of us are overthinking these questions because of the way they work these. All right, so it says the area of a square is seven squared. So Olivia, 
What is 7 squared? Right, so it's 7 to squared, but what is 7 squared? What is that answer? Like what's 7 times 7? 49. 49. So, Olivia, essentially, if you just simply write out your problem, do you answer this question? Yes, because what is the side length if our area of the square is 7 squared? We know it's 49, correct? Yes. So again, if you just simply write out what it's asking, you get your answer. So what is the side length of one of our sides of our squares? 7. 7. 7 inches. Why is it not 7 inches squared? Michaela. Because it's not uh, the area. Perfect. It's not the area yet, it's just one over not two. Does that make sense, Olivia? Yeah. All right, number three, it says the area of a square is 81 meters squared. Use an exponent to express this area. Go ahead. Write it down and then give me a thumbs up when you think you have your answer. <coughs> Don't overthink it, guys. Do not. Okay, so what, let's kind of do this step by step. So first and foremost, what number gives us 81 when we multiply it by itself? Jeremiah. Nine. nine. All right, so nine, we know we have to multiply by itself, so what's another way of, <coughs> excuse me, writing that using an exponent? Jeremiah. Um, nine and then you Okay, and then what do we have to write? Cooper? Why do we have to write the meter squared? Because it's talking about the area. All right, so you have three examples on the left side. Now, number four, number five, and number six are essentially very similar, except for they're talking about a cube. All right, I'm going to give you, let's say, four minutes to answer four, five, and six. When you're done, stand up for me if you finish before the time.
this part of where it sends your data to the GIS for the rest of that answer? So it would be six, 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 six. Yeah. Are you drawing on the side of your paper in my desk, or are you actually working? If you're standing, you shouldn't be talking. So you multiply five by itself how many times? To find the volume. Of the cube? Huh? Of the cube? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so five to the third, and then what is my unit? Inches. Inches cubed. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yep, no, that's fine. All right, so that's essentially what that one should look like. All right, number five, it says the volume of a cube is six to the third centimeters cubed. What is its edge length? What is the edge length? Ace? Um, six centimeters. Yes. All right, and if you were kind of confused, if you just write it out as six times six times six, you still get the same answer, okay? And then the last one, number six, it says a cube has edge length S units. Use an exponent to write an expression for its volume. All right, Michaela. Um, S cubed. S cubed. S cubed. Unit cubed. Unit cubed. All right, good job. <coughs> now go ahead and you can glue this into your notebook on this page. I'm going to come around with your folder. You should not be talking. Um. When you're done with your cool down, this is your first grade for the second nine weeks. All right, everyone today starts with an A. You need to keep your A. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, remember, if tomorrow you get this back and it does not have A100 on it, and it's, so it's two questions, so you're gonna get 150 or zero. So if you get a 50 or zero, you need to get this done and then turn it back into that third period band tomorrow. Um, when you are finished with cool down, you need to be working on Imagine Math. Um, you 